In uh, this episode of the Internet of Things show, you'll hear about the new remote monitoring pre-configured solution. And here today, we have Tim with us. Hey, Tim, how are you? Great, how's it going? Good. Good. So, Tim, who are you? Uh, I'm the dev lead for the Azure IoT Suite team. Good, so your, your team is actually in charge of developing these pre-configured solutions, right? That's right. So, tell me a bit more about, like, we know a bit about IoT Suite. We know a bit about mm -hmm. pre-configured solutions. What's new? Because we had an announcement recently. Yeah, we just shipped the new version of uh, remote monitoring for, um, it's a, one of our pre-configured solutions or solution accelerators. Okay, so like, maybe in a nutshell, remind people, so why is it for, what do we have like these pre-configured yeah. solutions? Yeah, so pre-configured solutions are really built um, kind of probably for a, a couple of reasons. One is, is to give people a quick idea of what an IoT solution could look like, so to provide a demo. Um, the second thing is, is really a reference um, example or reference example using our reference architecture mm -hmm. of how to build an IoT solution. Um, and we offer deployment of those solutions into customer subscriptions, both from our portal, from AzureIoTSuite.com, okay. and from our CLI, from our command line interface. Okay. So basically, it's kind of a, if I think um, as, as a developer, it's a bit my, my like, create new project template, but pretty much like Evolve, right? Kind of a yeah. functional, right? No, I, mean, I think that's pretty close. It's, um, there's, I mean, as we, you know, I think, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at it in a few minutes. There's a fair bit more, I guess, complexity and work that we've put behind um, around uh, just trying to make it easier to build the, you know, the pretty large set of components that sit behind an IoT app. Okay. Yep. And so um, the name of it, like the, this pre-configured pre solution, remote monitoring, mm -hmm. actually tells what it is about, right? So yeah. it actually is an implementation, if I understand correctly, of that pattern of collecting data from devices, mm -hmm. being able to extract insights out of it, and actually also take action, right? Because we'll be yeah. able to set configurations mm -hmm. and, and so forth on the devices. That's right. We deploy a simulator that simulates um, data coming into an IoT hub we have a rules processing in, or rules processing engine that runs over that data, generates alarms for it, and then um, a UI that actually allows visualization of those devices that mm -hmm. are connected and um, the the raw data, and then also the alarms generated. Um, I would probably say, in addition to that, it doesn't like, what we've built doesn't doesn't have to be simulated devices that are touching it. It can be um, you could attach your own physical devices um, to it as well. Okay. Yeah, and we have samples for that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, before we, we dive into hey how to 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 deploy and so on, I know we have some diagrams that show a bit of the architecture. It's always interesting before launching the thing that has mm -hmm. this nice UI to show a bit about you know what's under the hood. And so how is it architectured? Yeah, absolutely. So probably the easiest way to see yeah. the architecture is to come to the machine and go to our, we have, we have two versions of remote monitoring. We have a C-sharp version okay. and we have a Java version. Okay. Both of them map to top level repos, a .NET repo and a Java repo. Okay. So each of them have an- So everything open source. Yeah, everything's okay. on GitHub. It's all mm -hmm. like I mean, really, what we show is is we we allow easy deployment of these pre-configured solutions into your subscription, uh -huh. but then it's the code is open source, okay. so you can go in and you know and really make it yours. And you know okay. what what we've built, we think is a good part of the way there for what customer or what folks are going to want to build. But we're sure that people are going to want to modify it and you know and okay. change it. Okay. So if you want to look at the architecture of the solution. As I said, there are two top-level repos, one for our C-sharp solution, our .NET solution, right. one for our Java solution. Right. So what I'm opening up now is, is our top-level C-sharp or .NET yep. solution. Yep. Um, we've put a fair amount of work into the docs that are yep. in the GitHub repos. All of these are, are public, as I said before. Um, the top-level repos just give a basic description of what we offer in remote okay. monitoring. Um, and then, so if you if you look through the README, you'll see an overview, and then how to get started or how to easily install remote awesome. monitoring and actually look at it. So no excuse, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then if you hop over to the wiki, it gives you a little bit more detail nice. about how it's actually built. Got it. So here we have a, an architecture diagram, mm -hmm. um, and our architecture diagram shows roughly the way to think about it is each of these boxes, let me get it centered, that you see on screen offer or, or map to a GitHub repo okay. that is a microservice. And mm. you can see, like for example, we have an IoT Hub Manager. We have a version built um, using Java okay. and a version in C Sharp. Um, we have a telemetry agent that does streaming analysis and rules processing, also Java and C Sharp. 
um, telemetry for querying what telemetry is sitting in cold storage um, as well, or what alarms are sitting in cold storage. So okay. th the gist of it is, is we use a microservices-based architecture. Each of these boxes maps to a GitHub repo that's either written with Java or written or, with C Sharp. Got it. Each of them build um, into a Docker container, which we deploy onto a VM for running the solution. The exception to Java C Sharp is, of course, the UI. Um, mm -hmm. We have a UI that sits on top of the microservices. The okay. UI is built with um, JavaScript React. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And and because this is based on the microservices architecture, everything is loosely coupled. So basically, mm -hmm. can actually extract pieces and recombine all of that. We'll we'll talk about customization later. Okay, cool. But I'm now super curious because actually this is the uh, the ugly thing happening underneath, right? Yeah. It's pretty clean though yeah. uh, in terms of our architecture, pretty clear. But I want to see how you actually deploy the dashboard and and, and all yeah. that together, right? Yep. Cool. So. Two ways to deploy a new solution. One is, is go to our, our portal, which is azureiotsuite.com. Mm -hmm. um, and on this portal, what it's going to do is, is it's going to give us a set of, or it's going to give us a choice of what pre-configured solutions we'd like you would like to deploy. Okay. So I'm at the portal. Okay. You um, have an, I'm you have an Azure in. subscription, right? You're That's right. I, I, I already have an Azure subscription. Okay. What this portal is going to do is it's going to take all of that you know, kind of that ugly how that we were just looking mm -hmm. at, and it's going to deploy it into your subscription. At once. Like, exactly. Awesome. So if we say create a new solution, and then wait for it to come up, you'll see we have a remote monitoring solution, a remote monitoring solution that's in preview, which okay. is, this is exactly what we just this shipped. This is a new one. This yeah, is exactly. the one we're interested in. A connected factory solution, and then here a predictive maintenance solution. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at the one that we just shipped, so the preview of remote monitoring. So if we select it, what it's going to ask us to do here is it's going to ask us to give a solution name, what subscription we want to deploy okay. into, and what region as well. Which region is available now for um, some of them? I guess people can discover a number. That. Yeah, a number like of I, <laughs> I can't list them all. I think they're they're somewhere around um, you know ten to fifteen or yeah. so. Objective being that they will be available everywhere, right? Yeah, okay. they are. Um, okay. And I, I think that. The other thing I, would, I wanted to say on this page, you can deploy either a C-sharp or a Java solution. Okay. And then here you can deploy a basic solution. You can't actually yet deploy a standard solution okay. from okay. the portal. Mm -hmm. um, a basic solution deploys to a single VM, hosting all of these containers on that VM, the Got Docker it. containers. Okay. So self-contained, one instance, yeah. like Simple, minimum, minimum consumption to the resources. That's right. Yeah. Basic is really built around like, hey, like, mm -hmm. I need a, a proof of concept. So let me get a POC up and running quickly. Mm -hmm. Standard is really built around having a production-ready system. Here we use Kubernetes as our mm -hmm. orchestrator. Um, we're running across a cluster of uh, uh, three VMs. OK, yeah. awesome. So you can deploy from the site, from the portal, as we're set up to do here. Okay. Um, the other place that you can deploy is, is from our command line. OK. Um, here I've already mm -hmm. synced the PCS, um, uh, or the PCS CLI Sorry, the repo. Sorry, PCS CLI repo. Okay. Exactly. And then um, the first thing that you would do, or I'll, I'll actually pull the help up for the command line first. And you can see it's giving you options for mm -hmm. similar to what we just saw on the portal. Probably the one big difference being that I can also deploy a standard solution from the got, command line right now. Got it. Got it. We just haven't integrated it into the portal right. yet. So what the, what the tool does, the same way as the the back, if I understand correctly, is basically. Uh, Deploying the resources on on your subscription, right? Based on exactly. on the configuration, is it ARM? Yeah. Is it resource management? Yeah, it's using an ARM template on the back end to pull these resources together, and then place them into your subscription with like the name that you specified, and obviously your subscription in the okay. region that you specified as well. So, how long does it take to deploy a solution like that on it's, average? It's somewhere around uh, six to eight minutes to deploy it. So it's pretty quick That's pretty to quick. see something running. Yeah. yeah. So let's see one that you deployed already to see how it looks like in terms of the dashboard. Okay, cool. Um, so I have over here one that I deployed uh, right before we met. So six, eight minutes ago? Yeah, yeah something <laughs> like that. <laughs> right. Um, you see over here, you have four different tabs, a dashboard, a okay. devices list, a list of rules, and then a maintenance tab where we can execute um, operations against those devices. Uh -huh. This dashboard is kind of your overview of the solution. Okay. So you have a map showing your devices. Here I just have a static map. What um, is that? Uh, the static map is like I didn't have a Bing map key to use for this particular deployment. 
Got it. OK, so we're actually optimizing on resources used right we, here, right? We so are. Yeah. I mean, and <coughs> like for your subscription, if you're already using a Bing map key, then it would it's pretty straightforward to actually replace the static, static map with that existing Bing map Got key, it. which is yep. probably likely what you're yep. going to want to do. Okay. Um, here you have a summary of what alarms are open on your devices. You'll, okay. you'll notice it just incremented on the screen. You have a total number of devices and then what devices are online, so currently connected. Here's a summary of what alarms we have. And then if we scroll down a little bit, we see, a, um, I guess, a hot chart of telemetry that mm -hmm. is running right now. We can filter it to say, say I just want to look at pressure. And I see just pressure. And I can drill in and look at the individual devices nice. for just pressure. Okay. also have a set of these are basically placeholder KPIs. Our assumption is, is that people will obviously connect their own devices mm -hmm. and then design their own KPIs for what they want to show on screen. Right. But I guess using React.js and these controls actually gives them a good idea where to start from, right? That's the idea. <laughs> like Essentially, what we're trying to do is, is um, accelerate people in getting solutions into market and yeah. showing them a, 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 a good way to build out a solution using a, a, like a recommended architecture from Azure IoT. Got it. So I see on top right here in the mm -hmm. dashboard, you have, do you have a way of logging in a user for having different type of right or, or access? Um, we don't yet. What we, we do plan on in the future, adding the capability to offer different roles. It's something that customers have consistently asked for yeah. since we went out for a public preview. Makes sense. Um, kind of the mode that we're in right now is this we we just shipped our public preview, and what we're really asking for is, is folks are coming in, um, pulling the repos, or installing from suite, starting to look at it, kick the tires, and starting to customize it. And what we really would like to hear from folks is, is hey, like send us what problems yeah. you're having, or send us what you would like us to add, or open GitHub, like feel free to open issues inside of our GitHub repos. Can or you submit pull requests as well? Absolutely. Nice. We've already taken Love somewhere that. around 10 or 15 pull requests in the last couple of weeks. So That's awesome. Yeah, no, we'd love to see more. Yeah, so so basically everything is really on that, on that dashboard, mm -hmm. right? Devices are actually simulated, but you have different types of devices. We do. So if you come into devices, you can add a new device, and I'll show you. You can add either a simulated or a physical device. Okay. If you're adding a simulated device, we offer a stock set of devices that you can add, an mm -hmm. elevator, an engine, a chiller. That will change the type of data that's sending, basically, right? Yeah, it changes the device model, uh -huh. how the device is made up, like what are its tags, what are its properties, and what kind of telemetry it sends. Um, and these can be modified. Like um, you could either modify the ones that we have in the, you know, in the box, if you will, okay. or you could add completely new devices that are your own. Got it. So you can yeah. build your own proof of concept for your own solution just by going and playing around with the simulator uh, for the devices and create your own one. Yeah, like one of the ways cool. that we see people working, and not everyone works like this, but a number of them do, or they'll take remote monitoring, they'll install it, they'll see it, and they'll want to kind of place their business on top of it. So they don't want to see the the simulated set of devices that we've deployed, they want mm -hmm. to put their device out there. So Got they'll it. remove all of our devices, and they'll put just their elevator device or their pump device Makes inside sense. of here and see their telemetry flowing into the UI. So it's, it's kind of a step towards implementing that IoT app. And then, of course, they're going to take it from there and connect their physical devices, and their physical devices start sending telemetry. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. So um, it, does, it does allow you to create these devices, have a flow of simulated data com or real data coming in, and display it. But you also have rules, right? You can adapt the rules. We do. So in Box, we ship with a number of rules where, or a number of rules that run against the telemetry stream okay. coming from our simulated devices. Okay. So this particular rule that we're looking at right here is a rule for a chiller. Mm -hmm. So chiller refrigerator. This chiller is saying, hey, if pressure is greater than 250, then I want you to generate a critical alarm. And this particular rule is enabled. Um, what's, I, I what's, could edit the rule or create my own new ones. What's implementing that rule in the back? Is it like row co code of yours, or is it some service that we're using? Right now, it's our code. And what's happening is, is we have this telemetry agent, which is okay. doing processing over that stream of telemetry data, mm -hmm. and then using that rule to evaluate that telemetry stream to generate an alarm here. Got it. In the okay. future, what we see from more complex rules is replacing this telemetry agent microservice. And it's 
I mean, it's it's a it's a container. It's separated. Yeah. <clears throat> like we picture replacing it with ASA, um, potentially Stimulus. with Spark. We've yeah, talked yeah, about yeah, it as Spark. well. Spark. Okay. Yep. So basically, going going full on from this sample code to have an actual pass service that does advanced analytics on the data, right? Yeah, awesome. absolutely. And it's like, once again, because it's all microservices, it's like pretty much like super easy to connect these. Yeah, I mean, these boxes connect over REST HTTP, and if you wanted to swap in out for your own custom yeah. code or a different you know, pass service or other other product, then you certainly could. Yeah. That, yeah. That's exactly what it's yeah. built for, and it's what we hope people will do. Awesome, so you have this, we we're talking about the pattern, um, ingesting data, Determining insights using the rules. Yep. Taking action. Like, can you actually show me an example with yeah. that dashboard on how to take action? Um, so let's take a look at. We were just looking at this particular rule. So let's do this. Let's go over to maintenance, and let's filter this to just chillers. And so here you see, like, we have an alarm for this chiller pressure rule. Okay. And if we click on this, then we'll see a number of occurrences of that alarm happening here. So if, say, for example. I wanted to acknowledge that alarm, I could. Um, Which means when you acknowledge, it's like, hey, I've seen there's an alarm, nothing I'm going to yeah, do. You're basically it's saying, like, hey, like, I'm looking at this alarm, like, okay. is the workflow that we picture. Here we have the device mm -hmm. that's generating these alarms. So this device is in error. So it's basically saying, hey, like, um, this device is triggering that pressure alarm consistently. Mm -hmm. So what we can do with the device is if we hard select on this checkbox. I have to say, it doesn't look really good for a pressure. Like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's simulated data. It is, yeah. but it doesn't look good okay. for pressure. Um, so if you come over to schedule, then what you'll see here are a set of methods mm -hmm. that the simulated device supports. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose the emergency valve release method. Okay. So you say method. I mean, uh -huh. that's a very uh, particular word you're using. That's yep. the method that are used uh, on top of Azure IT Hub, right? That's right. This okay. is the actual method that what's happening here is this UI mm -hmm. is going to ask the IoT Hub to execute a method on that simulated um, device. Okay. That method is called emergency valve release. Okay. So here I've created this method job, mm -hmm. if you will, called release. I apply it. And it's going to go and ask the IoT Hub to execute it against the simulator. So right now, the simulator is executing that method. If I click View, it'll deep link to the status of that method execution. Okay. And here you can see, like, yes, I've completed executing it. And if we want to see the results, if we came back to the dashboard, we're already filtered to just chillers. Okay. And if we scroll down and we look at just pressure, because it was pressure release, you'll notice here, this is where it was an error. Yeah. And then somewhere right about here, we executed that method. And notice that now the pressure readings are way uh, down, way down here. Awesome. So if you wait for 15 seconds or so, you'll see it grab another set of telemetry from the back end. Okay. And it, it'll, it'll, of course, basically show a, a nominal state. way of working yeah. for that for that chiller, yeah. right? So our mental model is, is we provision these devices. Some of them are, are uh, you know, some of them are working as expected. Yeah. Some of them are working, um, some of them are in error. And then we offer a set of methods out of the box mm -hmm. that fix the errors, essentially. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And we'll talk later on about uh, you know customizing all of that. But that's that's a great introduction. Well, thanks, team. So this is cool. definitely I would say the call to action here is like go to azureitsuite.com, right, or find on GitHub the uh, remote monitoring preconfigured solution and start playing with that. Thanks, Tim. Great. Thank you.